Welcome back to Reliable Sources. It's time now for one of my favorite segments, Red News, Blue News, a weekly look at how partisan media sometimes only shows you one side of the story. And this week's example is really important. So let's go ahead and stipulate right at the start that the extremist group known as ISIS is a force to be reckoned with, that its actions are atrocious, and that its beliefs are backwards. But let's consider whether there's a direct threat to America that is being overstated, and whether the press is doing what it should be doing, which is challenging people in power and demanding evidence for their assertions. I think the tone of a lot of the news coverage about ISIS has been reflecting the government position. I mean, here's what Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel said last week. ISIL is as sophisticated and well-funded as any uh, group that we have seen. We must pre prepare for, for everything. When members of the news media hear that kind of rhetoric, alarm bells have to go off. Beyond anything that we've seen? Now, there has been some solid reporting about how capable ISIS is and is not. But too many talking heads on TV have just picked up where Hegel left off and assumed the very worst. Every day, there are new insinuations that these terrorists will infiltrate the United States. And, and, and you have a flood of people coming over from South America and Mexico. We don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. Hey, Ange, uh, so one of the issues... Wait, did you see what Eric Bowling did just there? He just dropped that Mexico reference and then moved on from it. Texas Governor Rick Perry has similarly warned about ISIS potentially sneaking in through the southern border, but the evidence is just not there. And yet, the people who say this stuff don't seem to be held accountable. On Fox this week, House Intel Committee Chair Mike Rogers used one of the biggest weasel words there is, the word they, to warn of a threat at the northern border. Don't forget about Canada. They believe that there's maybe as many as 500 Canadians uh, fighting. And all you're, you're, you're just a, a, a car ride away from driving across that border and doing something to the United States. They believe? Who is they? He didn't say, and Megyn Kelly didn't ask. But his claim still got picked up and repeated elsewhere. Now, that's some red news, but truth be told, there's not a lot of blue news out there about this. I mean, this is a montage from MSNBC's The Last Word using lots of MSNBC clips from the middle of last week. Growing threat of the terrorist group ISIS. The Islamist murderers in Syria and Iraq. They are a clear and present danger. Dozens of, uh, of Americans are potentially becoming radicalized. How close is the U.S. to airstrikes on ISIS in Syria? President Obama made it clear on Thursday that airstrikes in Syria are not imminent. He seemed, at least to me, frustrated that the media had gotten ahead of him, almost as if the media was pushing him to attack. So our question this morning is whether the threat to the homeland is being exaggerated. For the record, the Department of Homeland Security came out on Friday and said it's, quote, unaware of any specific credible threat to the U.S. homeland from ISIS. Let me bring in two people who come at this issue from very different directions. Josh Rogan, a senior correspondent for The Daily Beast, who's been covering the possibility of further airstrikes against ISIS. He's also a CNN political analyst. And Naomi Wolf, an author and political activist. Welcome to you both. And Naomi, let me start by asking about this comment you made on Twitter, referencing Chuck Hagel's remarks that I played a few minutes ago. You wrote, you know it's terror hype when the Pentagon calls a press conference to use action movie terms such as apocalyptic. Is that what you think's going on here, terror hype? We can't know. Um, what is true about a lot of these assertions that are being made because the news media is not verifying them or confirming them or asking for more evidence or more accountability, which is their job. You can't just say there are 100 Americans fighting or there are 800 British people fighting. The Pentagon just asked for $500 million from Congress in a time of peace, you know, when there are no... There's, there's no war. You know, Congress hasn't declared war, which is what our Constitution uh, obligates Congress to do if anyone well, spends we, money on war. We do war. remain and at so war in Afghanistan. We are uh, striking ISIS in Iraq. Josh, but let me ask you about this, because you bring a different perspective. You're interviewing sources. You're writing about war planning for the Daily Beast. Have you seen evidence about a threat from ISIS to the U.S., not just an interest in attacking, but an ability to attack? Uh, yes, but first of all, I think it's kind of too cute by half for the administration to hype the ISIS threat on day one, and then two days later come out and set, blame the media for hyping the ISIS threat, right? There's a reason that journalists all over Washington ha thought that the administration was preparing to strike Syria, because they were preparing to strike Syria. Ultimately, it seems that they're not going to do it anytime soon. But And you've written for the Daily Beast about how there are some in the administration frustrated by the lack of action. 
Right, and if the administration was just all talk and no action, well, they fooled a lot of people inside their own administration as well. Uh, so it's it's all true that uh, you know a lot of uh, reporters have come late to the ISIS story. It's also true that the administration has come late to the ISIS story, which has been uh, well written about in the Arab media and in the region for over a year. It's also true that ISIS also benefits from hyping their own threat. They have been a, a huge uh, social media campaign just for that purpose. So that's kind of a perfect storm of interest of both us and them hyping this threat. Uh, uh, but there is some there there. And let's not, I mean, what would they have to do to actually be a real threat? They've taken over huge parts of two countries. They're in two other countries. They have cities. They have billions of dollars. They're committing atrocities on YouTube. Uh, so let's uh, stipulate here that beyond the rhetoric, this is a persistent and serious threat uh, that is getting more coverage, as it rightly should. Uh, let's also point out here that uh, those reporters who actually are doing the on-the-ground reporting are yeah. putting themselves in grave danger, and James Foley is the perfect example of this. There is a huge effort to verify these facts. It's extremely difficult, and everyone who does this does this at the risk of their own life. I'm uh, glad you mentioned that, and I want us to keep in our minds today, Steve, Steve Sotloff and the other journalists who are, are still missing in Syria. But Naomi, I heard you wanted to jump in there. Really what I'm worried about from where I sit, because I get information streams from citizens around the world, is that the same story and the same talking points from officials about how Britons and Australians and Canadians and Americans are joining this fight is, is identical in an echo chamber around the world. And what, the reason but that's I'm worried true. about that, I mean, first how do of all, how, First of, how do we know? Because we have extensive intelligence uh, uh, assets on the ground. All of these countries have hundreds of CIA, MI6, Turkish right. intelligence, French intelligence, not to mention all of the Syrians who have been tracking ISIS and all of these groups for three years. There's a ton of evidence. It's true that... Let, let's also remember here that the administration's declaratory policy, what they say, and their functional policy, what they're doing on the ground, are two totally different things. So at the same time, they're hyping the threat of ISIS. The president is deciding not to confront ISIS in Syria. So it's not as if the Pentagon and the White House are pushing us towards war in Syria. Quite the contrary. That's not what I'm suggesting. They're, they're, That's not what I'm suggesting. Right. So, so what's the point of the hype? The idea is the point of oh. the hype is, is sort of a cover your butt mission by the administration. They know that Americans, after the death of James Foley, are very concerned about the ISIS threat. I think the bottom line here is that we have a lot of firsthand information because people on the ground, without the, the filter Who? of... Who? All sorts of people. You're, you're they, citing YouTube videos. That is not a source for a credible journalist to cite. No, you need to, and this we, is we the need kind to of vet that. And we're doing. Uh, listen, we need like, to Like, where is the video taken? Who was it taken by? Just bear with me. What we're pioneering on Daily Cloud is citizen journalism that actually verifies. It's a connected world. Everyone has cell phones. So if yeah. you're saying that in a major city in Syria, a quarter of a million dollars, people are being... I'm sorry, a quarter of a million citizens are being rounded up or people are being crucified upside down and these various uh, atrocity stories which always accompany the drumbeat to war, right? They may be happening, but verify. There are credible people on the ground, and we did this in Gaza, we did this in the south of Israel, and we, I you just know, don't knocked a lot of stories out of the why you don't see, there, I mean, that is going on. There are thousands sure, of people. Sure, but source the videos. I'm, just source them. You can't, if you're a real journalist, you can't say, oh, this is on YouTube. It's a video of an atrocity. But no one's saying people that. People make that's fake a, that's videos a, all the time. Yeah, but that's a total straw man, because let's take the James Foley video, for example, right? That was a video put out by the official ISIS media hub, right, and propagated by ISIS, but it, 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 it endured an enormous amount of scrutiny. There was lots of people saying that the video was uh, uh, faked or that the person uh, doing the, mur the, the talking wasn't the person doing the killing. It underwent through a very, you know, sort of crowdsourced method by journalists, activists, eyewitnesses on the ground, citizen journalists, a lot of vetting, and then that led to a lot of revelations that's about it. Right, that's so that's, well, that's, that's what's what happening. Happen. So I don't understand what your criticism yeah, I'm gonna, is. It's an well, I'm criticizing system. the major news media for not doing that kind of vetting and leaving it to citizen journalists to ask tough questions. It's imperfect. It's a mess. Uh, but that, that's the best that we can do. We need to do better, and the I, government needs to do better. Uh, but in the end, we can't blame the media for, what, for what's going on I agree with a lot of both of what you're saying, and I'm going to wrap up there. Josh Rogan, Naomi Wolf, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Let me close with one more thought. This is from the journalist Kurt Eichenwald, who wrote this in Newsweek. ISIS can't hurt the U.S. in any significant way unless Americans let it. That is, unless Americans give in to fear and hysteria.